Hello, saints of God, friends of the Agape Church and family. I am Sister Connie Smith, and here I am again from the Agape Christian Worship Center here to give you a devotional for today. Today we're going to be talking about fables, stories, and heroes. And we're going to come from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. And it reads as follows. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. This letter of 2 Timothy is the second letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to his protege, Timothy. Unfortunately, at this time, Paul was incarcerated or in prison in Rome, and he was actually awaiting his execution. And he wrote this second letter to Timothy, his protege. He was handing over or passing the torch on to a new generation of pastors, of which Timothy was one at the church in Ephesus. He was describing for Timothy the type of people that he was going to encounter in his teaching and his preaching. And he, he described them in a very funny way of having itching ears. So what are itching ears? Itching ears means that you only want to listen to those people that are going to say what you want them to say or are going to teach and preach what you want to believe and what you want to do. It's a person that does not want to hear the truth for various reasons. It seems like a lot of our society today fall into that category. And that may be the result of why they are not going to church. They're not listening to the word of God being taught and preached because to them, the Bible does not support the values and the beliefs that they desire to live by today. In other words, they feel that God's word maybe is ancient or outdated. So they have what we call itching ears. So how does this happen? And who are they listening to? They would rather listen to popular teachers, celebrities, motivational speakers, self-help gurus, I call them, and worldly leaders that support their desires and their beliefs of popular contemporary culture. The scripture that we looked up today looked at today says that but according to their own desires they have itching ears. In other words, it comes from them. The it comes from a desire to satisfy the flesh rather than the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, which dwells in us and tells us, leads us, guides us, and teaches us what is right and what is wrong and what is the way to go. That discernment that the Holy Spirit gives us will tell us when a person is a false teacher or will lead us to the Word of God to check out what they're saying to see if what they're saying is true or if it lines up with the word. How do we avoid the pitfalls of having itching ears? What do we look for? How do we know we're doing it? How do we know we're going in that direction? Well, I have a few ideas. The first one is what I call the he hero or superhero or the Disney effect. That's when you are looking for a political hero or superhero that can rescue you from your circumstances in life. Or the Disney effect where you just want to live happily ever after. In other words, you don't want any problems. You don't want any drama. You don't want any conflict. You don't want any trials or tribulations. You just want to be happy. Well, the Bible tells us that we're not always going to be happy. We can have joy, but we're not always going to be happy. Another way that we can fall into that having itching ears is coveting a lifestyle that we desire 
in a that we see in the rich and famous. In other words, we are looking at celebrities and famous people and desiring their lifestyle. Sometimes that comes from an oversaturation of television or videos or movies that depict a lifestyle that we perceive to be more desirable than our own. Sometimes we have the need for fame and notoriety. I just want to be somebody and I'll do whatever I have to do to get there. That can take us way out into the stratosphere. The folly of intellectual pride. That's my favorite one. That means you will say something, so to speak. I'm too smart for that God stuff. You know, education is a wonderful thing. It's desirable and it is certainly valuable in our society. And I have an education and I desire that others would get it too. But an education does not help us with the Word of God. The Word of God is spiritual. It comes from within. God has already told us that his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. No education will tell us who God is. Only God will tell us who he is. Falling into cults and other groups and following the trickery of men and women with false promises because we lack the spiritual maturity to see wolves in sheep's clothing. They have claims of being a deity or divine status or demigods. And because we're not mature in the word, we're easily led astray. And lastly, just wanting to believe that there's more than one way to God or more than one way to heaven. Just wanting to believe that, even though we've been told otherwise. The Bible tells us over in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, it says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go by it, because narrow is the gate and Difficult is the way which leads to life, and we know that means eternal life. And there are few who find it. That's in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. In other words, when you see a crowd, they're probably going in the wrong direction. The Bible says don't follow the crowd. Follow the narrow, go through the narrow gate. Read and study the Holy Bible. Everything we need to know and how to live is in the Word of God. It's in the Bible. It teaches us how to walk in the Spirit, and it's taught to us in the Holy Scriptures. If you were raised in a Christian home and had that favor and that wonderful blessing to do so, remember what you were taught as a child, and remember who taught it to you. Most often it was our grandparents or our parents or even aunties and uncles that taught us the word of God. Remember who it was and what they taught us. And if you were not, then find yourself a church to go to that teaches the uncompromising word of God. Talk to and learn from solid teachers. Have friends and associates that have a seasoned understanding of the word. Have a special prayer partner that can lead and guide you in the word of God. In 2 Timothy, the same book that we're learning from today, in chapter 3, verses 13 and 15, it says, But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Paul was reminding Timothy where he learned the word from two very strong women in his life. 
Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He died for our sins and he paid the price that we could not pay. And if we believe, we will have eternal life with him. Jesus is real and what he says is true. Now, I don't know about you, but anybody that would do something like that for me is a superhero in my book. Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have tribulation or trouble, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. John 16 and 33. Anyone that has overcome the world is my superhero, and that's Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and give you praise for another day and another opportunity, Father, to study your word, to talk about what you've said in the scriptures. And Lord, we don't take it for granted. We know that each day is not promised, but because of your new mercies every day, you have allowed us to see another time. So Father, we just pray that you would remind us of the spiritual teachers in our lives that knew the word of God and taught it to us. We also pray, Lord, for those that didn't have that, that you would lead them to someone, Lord, that can teach them and train them in your word. Father, we just thank you once again for this opportunity to share, and we pray, Father, that you would continue to bless us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you, saints, for another time with you, and thank you, friends, for joining us, and I hope to see you again next week. Be blessed, and give God all the glory for your life.